Hi, and welcome to Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly program about finance, money and investing on Radio Northern Beaches and broadcast nationally on the community radio network around Australia. I'm your host, Ray Trevison from OTG Capital, and today we're welcoming back to the microphone from Wise Girls Money Magic, Philippa Hunt. Philippa, it's been a little while, hasn't it? It has. Thank you for having me, Ray. It's good to be back again. Wonderful. Now, listeners, if you're not sure who Philippa is, um, she's actually actually on our website as one of our cameo regular contributors. And uh, one of the funny things is, uh, I guess, uh, now that we've gone national, uh, a lot more people are sort of knocking on my door to, to come and have a chat, which is kind of nice. And uh, it's always good to come back mm. to our regulars as well. Now, mm. interestingly, Philippa, um, for the listeners' benefit, you and I uh, catch up fairly regularly and um, we've been travelling both and you've actually moved into state. So you are now a uh, resident Victorian uh, rather than a resident Queenslander. So mm. um, I guess we can't have too many state of origin discussions for those uh, <laughs> in the northern states and those in the southern states are scratching their head going, haven't got a clue what you're talking about. And this, again, relates that now we're a national show. When I was talking to Simon Madden recently yes. in your town now, Philippa, yes. Simon Madden is God. And up here, uh, they go, Simon who? <laughs> so it's one of those kind of funny things that when you're having a national conversation, we've got to be a little careful. So, yes. And the first question I'm asked now that I'm a resident, what's your football team? <laughs> and they look at me expectantly. And of course, I grew up in Sydney. Um, and then I make this little political statement without realising I'm completely screwing it up. Um, well, I grew up near Parramatta, so I guess it's GWS. Ooh. These Melbourneites look scandalised. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, get a real well, team. So we, I'm we, still we, working on it. We, yeah, we could have a, a long discussion about that for another time, I'm sure. Yeah, look, it's funny. Listeners, one of the things that uh, Philippa and I did a lot uh, during the pandemic was talk. And uh, given the fact that, uh, Philippa, maybe you can explain what your psychological qualifications are. Mm. Well, I started off in education, went to business degree in organisational psychology, worked in HR for quite a while, and um, workplace um, change management. Mm -hmm. and mental health in the workplace and employee assistance programs. Um, moved back to Sydney from Canberra where all that was going on, put the springboard program through the University of Canberra where I was there on staff for a number of years and walked into financial planning and it's now 23 years this month, August, wow. that I've been an advisor to my astonishment. Um, I don't know where the time went but now what I'm bringing it all together the psychology, education, financial planning. I have my own financial services license as well. So that, and I also speak regularly on mental health for advisors in our industry. It's all come together. We're now focusing on educating women in not only in financial literacy, but financial competence, where they've got the skill, investment skills to do it themselves because. We've lost over, what, 12,000 advisors out of the industry in the last three years. Yeah. And I decided to stay, only this time, not just providing personal financial advice, but also educating women who can't afford advice. So I, I guess from that perspective... Just girls' money. Yeah, so I guess from that perspective, Philippa, you know a lot about the human mind and about relationships mm -hmm. and about mm -hmm. a lot of factors that... I guess many men may not always consider. And uh, I guess one of the things that you and I have focused on uh, over many shows over the last, mm. last number of years is uh, women and money. And so mm. today uh, you sent me this excellent article that uh, I've clipped out of The Guardian uh, that you sent me a link. And uh, the, the link's uh, heading is, while life has largely returned to normal since the pandemic, Many relationships have not. And reading through this article, I guess there are some real primers about what's been going on during the pandemic. And most people are now sort of past this, I guess, this uh, goalpost where they're going, okay, everything's back to normal. This 
article suggests anything but when it comes to relationships and when it comes to, I guess, a whole factor around how men and women coped or didn't cope didn't during cope. the lockdowns. And so let's focus a little bit. Uh, and so the opening sentence says, phones are ringing off the hook at couple helplines, leaving some experts worried lockdowns have had a permanent impact. Now, Philippa, you and I were talking about this just the other day. So mm. what are the direct things that you've actually seen in the last sort of weeks and months uh, that that sort of relate to this article that you sent to me? I had a meeting just before our session here with a lady who we're now teaming up together to help women going through the number of women who find themselves going through separation and divorce. It's not just marriages and relationships coming unstuck because people went through the mental health issues that emerged with being stuck, particularly in Victoria, with the lengthy lockdowns. It's the financial distress in the last 12 months mm. with the, you know, people are paying upwards of 1500 to $2,000 a month for the very same loan that they had for a long time and struggling to put food on the table. So now we're teaming up to actually help and educate women who are either thinking through, going through separation and divorce, and how we can help them not only become financially literate, but what they can do to help themselves. So what this article highlighted, it just seems to have arisen in front of me just in the last few weeks, is that the number of women who are facing their relationship breaking out, particularly much older women um, in their 50s and 60s, um, not just mental health, but finally they said, I can't do this anymore. But you and I have talked about this before, though, Philip. We have. You know, we, it just seems had, to have just uh, emerged. I could go back to the archives where we were talking about uh, and we'd seen this locally ourselves. Uh, mm. My wife and I have been very heavily involved in our in our school communities. Mm. And when the kids get to 17, 18, year 11, year 12, all of a sudden the shackles are off and women are starting to think to themselves, I'm not trapped any longer with the last child uh, matriculating and whichever term you want in whichever state you are, finishing school and heading off to university, a lot of women are deciding to pull the pin and say, you know what, Mr. Man, I've had enough and I'm moving on. That's true. And it's now moved forward with the pandemic triggering a whole lot of things that didn't have anything to do with kids leaving school. So what mm. we're finding when you go through this article is that more older people are filing for divorce to a rate of 2.2 per thousand people up from 1.9 a few years ago. Yes, so it's, it's not just, it's extraordinary. Yes, it's um, quite a rise, isn't it? It's it quite is. A and rise. so people are just saying, well, they've also had a lot of mental health issues that have emerged that may not have been obvious. And that sometimes the pandemic being locked in together sort of highlighted the issues. Now they're doing something about them post pandemic. You throw in the fact that people's finances are stretched beyond belief. We've got a perfect storm of stress that people who had savings 18 months ago are suddenly trying to work out how to feed their kids. Yeah. So, yeah. and then all the dogs and cats and pets are landing up in refuges because it's either the dog or the kids. <laughs> yeah. And I'm it's, sorry, it's... but a lot of people did go and get pets during the pandemic to keep themselves company and because of what's been going on economically, um, it's just come to this appalling situation that nobody saw coming. Well, it's it's one of those, again, really strange things when I read this article. The phones continue to ring off the hook at Relationships Australia, whereas once they were spikes around predictable dates such as Christmas and the state of origin, that one always gets me, I guess, now they're busy all the time, and the mm. average call has gone from 45 minutes to over an hour. So there's a, a lot of people in there, and they say clients are presenting with higher levels of complexity. Now, I want to be very specific. I wrote down here on my hard copy here, is that predominantly women that are calling up these lines? I mean, I know, uh, you know when we're talking about DV and uh, beds for uh, women escaping uh, abusive relationships, mm. that has gone through the roof uh, during the pandemic yes. and post-pandemic. That has not gone down at all. No. Um, and one could speculate for a whole range of different reasons, but certainly you know, a lot of money was stripped out of DV funding 
previously, um, and they grouped it all into one, which I just was astounded. But you know, we can have a discussion about that another day. And, and you know, it goes on to say it changed family dynamics and it changed dynamics in all relationships. Uh, and you know, I guess we've all got our own stories. But Philip, at the pointing end, when you are talking to women that are divorcing and coming to you now, what are what are some of the key things that you're seeing that really is taking you aback? Um, women who have been in long-term relationships. If I had a dollar for every time I've heard a woman say, "I just find money so scary because I didn't have to deal with it," I'd retire. Can we inflation um, uh, speculate that up to a dollar forty now? Because I think the, <laughs> the the cost of a buck has gone up a since a, a bit since we've been saying that saying. So let's say a buck forty. But yeah, I, I, I catch a drift. And the um, thing is that these women now are reaching out for help financially. Um, they're let, coming through, and I was, had a long conversation with a, a lady family planning lawyer recently mm-hmm. who deals with the financial side of family law matters, and she's been doing it for decades. And she said to me, the number of women who have clueless about what to do with the money once they get it that they've hard fought for, um, and she said, hence with the wise girl's money, I've, we're now developing a course specifically, Ray, as of today, we just suddenly realise that women going through contemplating separation, going through it or in the middle of divorce, these numbers have jumped and they need help because they think, God, I've never done this before, now what do I do? And so it's not just helping them through the psychology part and the lack of self-confidence and how their life is changing into their new circumstances. It's, It's not just providing advice, it's actually empowering them to learn how to manage their own finances and become financially competent. That's my driver. I guess we've been trying to do that now for, gosh, the show's been going for over three years now. And and education's always been my big bent, but Mm. it always seems to be that men either flummox their way through it, um, Mm. even if they're not overly financially literate, they seem to be able to fudge their way through it or they're able to, to get into a boys' network where they're well supported. But it doesn't seem to be the same for women. And mm-hmm. so when they, they get hit with this divorce situation or they are, uh, you know, hit with a lump sum, a lot of them don't know where to start. And fascinatingly, this article also says, uh, again, Relationships Australia, my staff have noticed that older people that have been in relationships for a long time have Mm -hmm. come out at the tail end of the pandemic and are ringing for information on divorce. She says, it's unusual. And and I guess I'm scratching my head because from a very personal perspective, being locked up like that, really, I think, it was a telling time. And uh, look, it's about time due for a, a break. You're here on Dollars and Making Sense. We're going to pick up on this uh, after our short break and disclaimer. I'm here with Philippa Hunt from Wise Girls Money. I'm Ray Treveson. You're here on Dollars and Making Sense. And we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, and thank you for listening to Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly radio program about finance, money and investing on Radio Northern Beaches and nationally on the community radio network around Australia. The views, comments and opinions aired during our program should not be construed or viewed as financial advice. Any commentary is general advice only and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. You should consider whether the advice is suitable for you and your personal circumstances. If in doubt, you should contact an authorised, licensed financial planner. We welcome questions and feedback, and you can get in touch with us via our blog, social media channels or email. Please search for Dollars and Making Sense in your favourite podcast platform or check out our blog at otgcapital.com.au forward slash blog. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dollars and Making Sense. I'm Ray Treveson, and at the microphone today, I have Philippa Hunt from Wise Girls Money. We are talking about relationship breakdown, financial stress, and post-pandemic. Now, before we went to the break, I was just about to relate to a very personal story, uh, Philippa, that during the lockdown, I think my wife and I have always had a very healthy relationship in that we talk a lot. Uh, I mean, I can talk a, a door off a barn, I guess, in that regard. But I think one of the things that we noticed during the pandemic being uh, living under each other's armpits, and given that I've worked from home for many, many years now, 
it wasn't all that much of a change, but I can imagine for so many people it would have been a dramatic change. I know many men that would have been stuck at home ripping what little hair they have left you know, as they're balding going, I don't know how to cope. And I think women are the same. They had their freedom, they had their outlets, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the pandemic, you know, they've got their you know, their love and their partner sitting there all the time and there's no relief. I mean, that really brought into stark relief quite a lot of uh, bumps and bruises, mm-hmm. didn't it? It did. The thing is now the upshot of all of this a year out um, is that people have finally made the decision after contemplating it for some time, thinking, well, I I need to do something. So these phone calls to these counselling services are getting longer to figure out what their options are. But also with the number of older people, it's now a real midlife for a lot of people in their 40s and 50s Mm -hmm. with these longer-term marriages and partnerships coming unstuck. Now they've said that the median age of divorce has grown steadily since the 1980s to 43 for women and 46 for men. Yeah, I've got to say that stat really shocked me because it really shocks me when I hear people in my local school community that have been together for 20, 25, 30 years and they're getting divorced and it's Mm. like, where the hell did that come from? Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, the thing is, now we've got a situation where more and more women are struggling to figure out what to do with finances they've never had to do before. And it's the, the lack of skill and knowledge and understanding that's scaring the daylights out of them. Where do I go? What do I do? And the thing is that there are, particularly now here in Melbourne, there are advisors who are helping women, but the thing is that advice is a one-off, here, I'll do it for you. What these women need is the day-to-day knowledge and skill to be able to do it for themselves with support. So there's this huge gap where I'm bringing the psychology and the way women's neuroscience and the way we deal with money and our language around money to help women navigate this entire change to their life and plan for a future that they didn't envisage the day they got married. Nobody gets married to get divorced, right? And so uh, uh, yeah, when these lost... That's a, a very you, safe statement, yes. Well, the thing is you also didn't have children to wind up as a single mother in most instances. So to support this new situation for them, they actually need the knowledge and skill um, to be able to manage it. And so for a lot of women, they've said, I don't know where to start because I didn't manage the finances. And it may not be an abusive situation. It just might have been the way that that marriage handled things or that partnership did things the way they were together. And the thing is, if you've got children, you've also got issues with parenting. Um, Also, when people end up on their own, as it says in this article, they end up being a lot more lonely than they ever were Mm. because while they were together in the place with the pandemic, the relationship wasn't good, then the feelings of loneliness within the relationship emerged. So now that they are on their own, because not not a lot of people um, have a relationship to go to just because they end up separated and divorced. And so they then have to turn around and start rebuilding their lives from every corner. And this is where you get, if there are mental health issues, um, why the counselling lines are being jammed with people who are struggling to know what to do next. Yes, it, it's no surprise that the counselling lines are, are jammed because the Relationships Australia research suggests that about 18% of relationships, including among family and friends, were affected negatively by the virus. And uh, again, when the, they talk about cabin fever, man, that's that's the one, isn't it? It really is. And so, you know, the feeling of loneliness, I think, was exacerbated by the, the lack of uh, person-to-person contact. And uh, I guess now that we've come out the, the tail end, um, I can't say we've come out of the tail end of the pandemic. I mean, I, I got COVID as recently as May of this year. Uh, and so I, I wish I could say that the, the, the actual disease has passed on because, no, it's still floating around. But I think uh, as a society, we've we've got that level of immunity. And I'm speaking out of turn now. I'm not a doctor, but it feels like, you know, that that's not quite as, as urgent a, a situation. But the mental health after effects are something that we are going to reverberate for quite some time, aren't they? 
Yes, it's the highest claim for income protection now for insurance companies. And this is something they didn't necessarily foresee or no. is this something that they did foresee? Because, no, because everybody went into lockdown in 2020 thinking this was a one-off thing. And as the virus, they finally had to lock them up until everybody got vaccinated and jabbed. Then they gradually let them out. Um, and it was in that forced enclosure that people found whether or not their relationships were going to make it or not. Now that they're out the other end, what we're struggling to deal with, and this is why we now, um, my colleague and I are setting this up, is to help women who found that their relationships didn't make it. Mm. And what, how do you help these people negotiate a completely different changed life from one that they had before they went into the pandemic? So the pandemic was the catalyst but you add in all the stressors, Ray, that we've had in the last 12 months with the cost of living, the mortgage rates going up, and no end in sight, it would seem, um, and the threat of an economic recession. And already you only have to look around the cafes where people are more worried about putting food on the table than going out for coffee. So these poor businesses that were smacked and had to shut down during the pandemic opened up over the last 18 months only to find now that people can't afford to go out and spend the money in a hospitality that they would have um, spent. So we've got more stressors now. Not it wasn't the pandemic was the start, but it's never ending, and these people are now just being hit by one after the next. Yeah, I, I got to say it's the kind of scenario when you talk about perfect storm. You know, people are getting browbeaten to the point where they're just sort of it's like being Struggling. in the surf and you're just being yeah. pounded by wave after wave after wave and sooner mm. or later you just start swallowing too much water mm. and decide, bugger it, I'm just going to go under. I, I think one of the, the interesting factors towards the tail end of this article th that I read, um, it, this is a very telling statement. It might be that COVID exacerbated some things, but the reality is that stresses, strains and problems were already well present. And if it wasn't going to be COVID, it was going to be something else. Now, yes. I, I guess there's an element of uh, calamity or, or, you know, <laughs> a, a, a tunnel that you, you can't, you know, it, it's going to happen regardless. And I, I think it's a little defeatist because I, I like to think that human nature is such that if you see an uncom oncoming tidal wave, that you're not going to just sit there and wait for it to hit you. You may actually do something to to get out of the way of it or or you know head for higher ground I mean, is well, but, but, again right, the anecdote but i agree with you here's the thing people thought oh thank god that's over next thing you know there's 12 months month after month of interest rate hikes yeah. people who were in their financial situation quite comfortable are now struggling and i'm going to say it but if they have a look at the number of of short-term rental stays that have been where long-term rentals have been taken out of the market and made into Airbnb and short-term stays, that half the housing shortage is because they're not accessing long-term rentals. Now we've got people in car parks and all sorts of things because they can't afford it. And then landlords are saying, well, if my interest rates are going up, I've got to put the rent up to cover it. Yeah, I, I guess we're, we're venturing into an area of policy debate and th these, this is an area that I think mm. you and I largely are in lockstep, but man, I've had some people on, on the show and even previous uh, collaborators that I have head clashed severely with on, on this factor. And Airbnb have come out vociferously suggesting that it's not their fault. Um, and and yet, I think you and I are of like mind that we, we'd both beg to differ. And right now, you know, we're, we're 14 months into a, a, a central centrist left government. And uh, my frustration is still <laughs> that I end up discussing with my wife is things aren't happening fast enough as far as I'm concerned. We, you know, we need to be changing policy a lot quicker, but, you know, we, we're in uh, an, an interesting time, I guess. We um, we are, are going to continue to struggle, I guess, is, is, the, is the clear message, don't you think? Well, I read in the paper today the way I do with the financial side of things, if they have one, if not two more, interest rate hikes, we will have a recession. I, I, I saw it, this in the 1980s, Ray, as I'm sure you did. Yeah, yeah. When and, interest and, rates were, what, 17, 18, 19 per cent? Well, again, one would suggest that the likelihood of us going to those levels are not high. 
However, you know, right now the, the likelihood is that the Yanks will uh, potentially, or they did raise last month, and so even with the prospect of a new RBA governor coming in um, and, and different governance, that she may lead a different uh, a different stratagem. Who knows? Sure, I hope I, so. I, well, uh, again... Sorry, that was it, my personal opinion coming in. I, I guess so, and, and you and I are both fairly opinionated when it comes to, I, I guess a lot of those discussions and uh, and again I, I'd, I'd have that discussion with many a landlord and and uh, around negative gearing and and the, the likelihood I, I think what makes me laugh at the moment is you know some on the other side of politics now suggesting that you know labor should be doing something about negative gearing and I just laugh because that's why Bill Shorten lost the the previous election it was that they had the temerity to even suggest that that, that should be done. Uh, that together with franking credits, which is again, you know, the biggest boondoggle we've ever had in in tax tax funded uh, uh, middle income uh, tax breaks and holidays for the wealthy. I, I I could go on and on. You know, we'll talk about policy at another at another time at length. So look, in rounding out, I think one of the key elements that COVID has done is it's brought into stark relief. I think that if a relationship was in trouble. COVID certainly made it stand up and go, hey, you're in big trouble. Mm. Um, I think that's without saying. I, I think to leave the show on a positive, though, you are pushing out some really good education that people can go and look at at Wise Girls Money. Mm. There is a lot of resource out there, ladies and gentlemen, that is free as well that I think people can be going to. Help it is at hand. And I think one of the real positives is that you know, we're getting a lot better at this than we were, say, three to five years ago. Would you agree with that at least? Yes. Um, I think it's with the meetings I've had in the last week, um, what my specific um, focus is, helping women go through these transitions, particularly financially and giving them skills to cope with a life that looks very different when they come out the other end to anything they have envisaged pre-pandemic. So there's a whole lot of stressors raised. Not just, the pandemic may have started it, but when you add on the economic situation that we've all found ourselves in since then, um, it's not getting any better. No, so what not. we're trying to do is to support women, um, grab their situation, work with it, um, come out with something positive for themselves and a lot more skilled up um, to take better care of themselves, particularly older women okay. that come out of long-term relationships. And that's us for this week, Philippa. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. You're here on Dollars and Making Sense, a weekly show about finance, money and investing. Philippa, we'll have you back. There's always something interesting to talk about. And until next time, Philippa, thank you so kindly. Thank you, Ryan.